Can you uh, tell us what you were doing before you entered the service? A little bit, a little history before you entered, uh, uh, entered the service. Well, I initially had hoped to be an attorney. And way back then, not very many people really thought women ought to do that. And most importantly, my family and relatives all thought that was a lost cause. So I went to business school and I was working as a secretary uh, before I went in the service and had taken the exam to go to Washington. And I had a mother who strongly disapproved and I was not old enough to say, shove it <laughs> and just go. And I took the exam twice and was called. What, what exam was this that you're talking it about? It was an exam to be a a secretary, a typist, a gopher, uh, to work for the government in Washington, and they didn't tell you where, you just took a test, and a number of the gals that I had gone to business school with had taken the test and had been called and had gone. And you were not, your parents my wouldn't allow you? My mother, I was the baby, and I wasn't 21. And I couldn't go unless she said, it's okay. I'll be done. You know, I guess I was brought up in a time when your parents really called the shots, I think. What prompted you to, to join the service? Because my father didn't agree with my mother. He, I, th I think he, he agreed with me that it really would be okay for me to go out and see a little bit about life. I think the older I get and the more I look back, I realize how sheltered I was about a lot of things. And my, I had, I, I did, I, I thought it would be a, a, you were following what all the advertisements said. You free a man up to go to war so that you in your way would be, you'd be doing one job to help a man do a different kind of a job. And I thought it would be fun to be on my own, uh, see how it was, and kill a couple birds, really. Uh, when, when you're brought up in a time that you live at home, I mean, very, very few women, young women, didn't live at home back in the 40s. I mean, if you, you got an apartment, it was always because you had some devious reason to, to get it. Uh, and my father was very supportive of this. And I went, I took the exam, I had the physical, and I passed on my birthday. And two months later, in January of 40, 41, January of 43, I was sworn in. Now, I picked, I, I'm not sure why I picked the Navy. I just thought I didn't want to be in the wax. And I don't know whether anybody ever stops to think that service people were not thought very highly of back in the 40s. The idea was if you enlisted in the service, you were kind of the lower echelon of human beings. Now, is this prior to the war or actually during the war as well? This was prior to the war. Okay. Yeah. And the early part of the war, uh, if you were drafted, that was one thing. But if you enlisted, and the minister of the church that I went to and a friend of mine went to, who we'll get to her, uh, stood in the pulpit and said there were two young women from this church who were going in the service. And you know what kind of women we were. I mean, you know what kind. And this man went to my mother and tried to, I mean, because he said, we weren't sending the right kind of a message and we weren't, you know, uh, it was, it was kind of a hard thing to take, but there were a lot of people that felt if you were a woman and you went into the service, you were going with not, well, like I say to you, I went because I really had a good intentions, good motives, but supposedly I didn't, according to a lot of people. I mean, that was just how it was.